Hello, my name is Abe. Welcome to Dead Cells. I have not played Dead Cells in quite some time. In fact, for a couple of years, I think. But since I stopped playing, I basically I played a little bit of the Rise of the Giant DLC. But since then, the Bad Seed and Fatal Falls DLCs have come out. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, as well as numerous little minor content updates and balancing uh, changes that have been released in Dead Cells. And I picked up the DLC in the Steam Summer Sale, decided that it has been a while, and I figured, hey, why don't we play a little bit of Dead Cells from the beginning and check out some of the new DLCs, the new changes, the new rebalancing, and everything. And also, I just want to play Dead Cells. The prison is directly connected to the outer yard, and the prisoners can choose between the rats and the crows. So if you've never seen Dead Cells, we're going to go through everything from the beginning. This is a new save file, and... We're gonna be just playing the game as usual, like from the from the get go. A to jump. X primary weapon. Bottom left corner, you can see your weapons. R chopping block. Looks like I had a bad time with it, because that that was our body. And there's a giant in the background. If you've never seen Dead Cells or played Dead Cells, it has a lot in common with 2D scro side scrolling beat 'em ups. It has a little bit of the storytelling elements from like a Dark Souls game. It has Metroidvania and roguelite elements where you complete runs and upgrade yourself permanently through the entire run. It's got rogue, those rogue legacy elements where you, you upgrade yourself and uh, in future runs you have access to those upgrades and new weapons and everything. It's a, uh, it's a fun game. Very fast paced too. Down A, go down. I gotta remember how to actually play this thing, and I am playing with a controller. Aren't you the headless fellow that's been getting around? I hope the text does not look too small. I have it at the incorrect resolution, but I'll fix it hopefully in the future. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Ah yes, that's right, no tongue. Anyways, it must be strange to be back from the dead. I mean, surely you must have noticed. You can no longer die. I don't really understand it, but you're not the first to find yourself in this situation, if that's what you want to know. That's interesting. Didn't roll through the door, crazy man. You can roll through the door. There is a dodge roll. There's a dodge roll. You avoid damage when you dodge roll. There's a double jump. You can eventually get more jumps. We can jump and climb these ledges. And we also have new items. We have a beginner's bow and an old wooden shield. The bow is now assigned to the Y button. Just fires an arrow. We shot the door open. You can take a shield instead of the bow or instead of the sword if you want. And you can use the shield to block and parry. They're, they're, those are different things. The parry reflects all damage. The block just helps to reduce the damage that you take. If you hold the button, you block. If you tap the button, you parry. Um, but I think we'll just go for a, a bow for the time being. Those are fun. Range weapons have ammo. The ammo does come back towards you uh, after a certain period of time, and then there's enemies that you gotta fight. Here in the prisoner's quarters, and the combat in the game does get pretty fast-paced pretty quickly. Combat in the game has always been like its its primary selling point to me, is that everything just feels nice, and it, it's, it's got a good flow to it. If you do a downward smash, you can actually do a lot of damage with your attack. Although, this guy just keeps dodging. There we go. And you can get scrolls of power to upgrade your ability abilities as you progress in Dead Cells. Everything is split up into red, purple, and green, brutality, tactics, and survival. Red is kind of focused on fire, bleed, and most melee weapons. Tactics is items, like active items that you put out, traps, abilities, and also lots of bows. And survival is, it gives you the most health and also is more related with shields and more defensive items. For now, I'm just gonna take the health upgrade. Um, and you can see in the bottom left corner, our health has gone up to 170 and we have 112 in our skills. Over the course of the game, you will be get, picking up a lot of ability points, so we don't have to worry so much about what we're gonna put them in. I mean, if I remember correctly, at the end of like normal, longer runs, you would have like 30 skills kind of divvied out between the abilities, and so we can we can kind of just, at least early, just take abilities in uh, whatever we want. 
And honestly, I'm just going to be taking ability points in whatever gives us the uh, the most health, because that's probably the most efficient thing to take early, because you're going to always need health. You know, we could, we could take it in uh, Red Brutality to make our weapon a little bit stronger. By the way, there's a blueprint for a blood sword. If we finish the level with this, we get that item unlocked. Um... Yeah, we could have upgraded Brutality to make our weapon better, or we could have upgraded Tactics to make our bow better. But, I figure let's just go for the HP. And you know what? I will go for Brutality. It gives us, it gave us, what, plus 50% health or something like that, plus 65% health, which stacks with all the other health upgrades we get. And it also just gave us 15% um, extra damage with red weapons, of which this sword is a red weapon. It's just a rusty sword. That's all it is, it's just, it has no special features. There was a secret little gem in the wall there which we picked up. And we can also get another bow. This one has more ammo, 24 instead of 6. It's a multi-knock bow, shoots three arrows at the same time, and does nearly twice the damage. So we will upgrade our bow here. Actually seems like it fires still very quickly. Everything must go. What do you need? It's a shop. We have no money, so... Sorry, shop. These things, by the way, teleporters. You can teleport to any location that you've already been to. Helps for backtracking and whatnot. That is a, ooh, also a pastry, if you need some health. There's a door here. If we wanted, we could pay to enter. Money's in the bottom right corner. And then we get another item. It's a wolf trap. Launches traps at root enemies, increases the damage they take. We will take it, because we don't have any other uh, kind of active item. And now, if we use this with right trigger, we can put out traps that if I can get these enemies to run into the traps... Oh, he's breaking the traps! That's what's going on. Oh, don't hit me. You jerk. That's what I wanted. I wanted the ghoul to get stuck into the trap. <laughs> I didn't realize that the uh, the guy with the shield would actually break it. And we got a chest. It is a throwing knife. Causes bleeding, automatically targets the nearest enemy, and also does bonus damage to a slowed down target. So this is um, a red-purple weapon. It can fit in either brutality or tactics builds. Its damage will scale off of your highest tiered ability. So if we had more points in tactics, it would scale in tactics. If we have more points in brutality, it scales in brutality. That's what the, the multicolored icon for the throwing knives means. Um, it could actually be worth it to replace the bow with the throwing knives. That way we would have uh, throwing knives, knives that do good damage. They would scale with our brutality. I kind of like the bow just for us being able to hit at long range. But I suppose the knives can also hit kind of at long range. They're a little bit slower, I think, but I think we'll just stick with the bow just for the hell of it. And this... Elite. Oh god, it's an elite, and all the elites still in this game have uh, horrible special abilities. This one has a laser thing that's attacking us. So I'm just gonna try to use a bow against him. I'm gonna try to cheese this guy. Ruby Amulet, an extra jump in midair, and a level of uh, brutality for free. We'll take it. So there's our first exit. The Promenade of the Condemned. Excuse me, excuse me. And uh, let's just keep exploring a little bit, because we're not done with the floor. That elite, I, I didn't think that they would give you, this is something we'll be able to interact with later. I didn't think they would give you elite enemies that have special abilities at the beginning of the game, but I guess elites always have special abilities now. So we can't interact with this either. We can tickle it. That's all we can do. Um, so let's get the heck out of here and go to the Promenade of the Condemned. But yes, that's um, interesting. I didn't think we would have special elite enemies with abilities, but that's okay. Now these are, ooh, we actually did unlock one special door. These are special doors that um, will open under special circumstances. You can either uh, do a level w w below a certain amount of time, or I think you just have to get there before that timer, um, your total timer ticks up, I, I forget which. You can either go fast 
or you can kill enemies without taking damage to unlock the second special door. So we unlocked one special door, which gives us money, cells, which are how you upgrade items, and a possibility of a new weapon. These are all linked together via the, the background link icon. We can only take one thing. Sinew Slicer is an active item that fires spinning blades at nearby enemies, inflicting bleed. We have a balanced blade, which just does damage. And damage increases up to 90% when you strike repeatedly, inflicts critical hits after 10 successive hits. Interesting. And then Twin Daggers just inflicts a critical hit on the third strike. I kind of like the idea of a balanced blade just because it's, it's simple. So we'll take the balanced blade. This just takes us back to the beginning. Is that poison? Is that just poison liquid? Nope, it's just piss water. All right. Well, look who it is! I'm the collector, and I'm about the closest thing you'll find to decent company around here. Bring me the cells you gather from the others. In exchange, I'll procure a few useful little items for you. Should you stumble upon a blueprint, bring it to me and I will introduce you to some more experimental items. So, we give, gave him the blood sword blueprint, and he has other things for us to uh, unlock, but the only thing we can unlock is the health flask, which is a heal. Unlocks a health potion that can be used at any time. So now we have a new ability, Left Bumper, which can heals, which heals us. You know what? I did not change the game title. You are correct. So hold Left Bumper. Heal up. No, I did change the game title, didn't I? I think I did. I think you're, you're just, yeah, you're just Josh and me. No, I didn't. Never mind. Didn't change the game title. There we go. Damn Collector with the Vax. So, Collector is where we spend our cells, we upgrade things. These are permanent upgrades that will stay with us for the entire save file, for the entire campaign. There's, it's not really a campaign, it's just here. So we could unlock a new weapon, a blood sword. We could unlock recycling to transform objects into gold, or another health flask, or gold reserves. Preserves gold when you die. Let's go for the health flask upgrade, because that's going to be an important one to get done. Well, hello, Mr. Prisoner, sir. I'm really happy I found this great stinking pile of corpses. Hmm, they look kind of familiar. You can't even find... Imagine all the stuff you can find in here. Funny, they look a little like me. Oh. <laughs> It's amazing that there's so many people in this kingdom and have the same uh, clothes. So the, this guy gives us mutations. Mutations are just specific upgrades that will stick with us through the run. Uh, plus damage for 8 seconds after killing an enemy. Melee kills reduce skill cooldowns. Plus damage dealt for 8 seconds and minus 30% damage taken for 3 seconds after being wounded. There's a lot of very specific and general mutations here, but honestly, I'm just going to go for the, the one up. Saves you one time if you die prematurely while not cursed. Cannot be picked up after the first mutation selection. Cannot be dropped once picked up, even if used. It's just good to have. It's just a one up. And then this little doohickey here fills up our health flask. Health flask filled. And heals you. So now we have one heal that we can use whenever we want. And we're going to the promenade of the condemned. Verity says there's a number of weapons people who play Dead Cells refuse to unlock to keep them out of the drop pool. Achievement. Love the Serenity. Reach a promenade for the first time. Oh, I didn't know they had achievements. I'm not going to do any of that nonsense. I'm not going to try to min-max the item pools. Secret zone discovered. Assassin's Dagger blueprint. I'm just going to play the game and unlock all the items because I want to know what all the items are and I want to find your first secret zone. Thank you, achievements. I want to I want to experience the game and I want to see all of the uh, all the items and see how they're all different how they've all changed over time. This is the guy that just fires a, a big ball at you. If we had um, shields, I could use the shields to um, deflect those projectiles. And I can even use the shields to block the attacks from like these guys, but I don't have any of those any shields right now. This jerk who died pretty quickly. He's a teleporting enemy. He will teleport behind you if you try to flee from him. 
Also, notice that we are getting critical hits off of this dagger now, this uh, balanced sword, because I'm... I, I got, like, a, a combo. I mean, the sword itself says damage increases when you strike repeatedly, so I must have gotten that that combo high enough that I was um, getting critical hits out of it, just by running around and attacking a whole lot. There's a lot of, you know, like, fast-paced movement and combat in a game like Dead Cells. That's half of the fun, is that you kind of feel like a bit of a badass when you're when you're in a good position, when you're you're doing well, when you're murdering things. Uh, there's his teleport. Got to be careful of this guy. It's a game that that makes you feel good when you're doing well. No, oh, there's a mummy. It's gonna take a while until we get the mummy rub. <laughs> I don't remember where it is. I don't remember where anything is or where these upgrades and skills are, but we'll hopefully find them at some time, at some point. Also, hey, don't forget about this. Enemies that are locked in that bear trap, they can still attack, but they can't turn around. So we can just smack someone in the back if they're, uh, if they're ever there. And it's caught in a bear trap. That's why I think it's actually, like, not a bad item. Let's get an upgrade. So we can upgrade Brutality Tactics or Survival. Honestly, our damage has been fine. Let's go for the plus 50% health. It makes the bow better. And I feel like, you know, we're gonna want... Let's also start using our bow a little bit more. We're gonna want, like, a relatively even distribution of, uh, of skills, I think. I don't think we need to worry so much about... Um, about min-maxing at this point, getting specific upgrades. You might have also noticed, by the way, that the um, upgrades for health did go down. As you upgrade Brutality Tactics and Survival, the amount of health you get gets lower and lower, but you can still finish the game with like thousands of HP. You will get a lot of health if you upgrade everything fully. So, it's a shop. Throwing knives, electric whip, nutcracker. You know what? Let's go for a red build. Let's go for full brutality, full red stats. And from now on, if we upgrade our uh, red stat, we'll get a whole lot of extra damage out of these throwing knives, which we can use to just bust down the wall here if we want. Ice grenade freezes its victims. I'm going to take it because it's a um, an active item and we only have one. So now we have... Right trigger, traps, left trigger, ice grenade. Visual effects in this game are also amazing. It's fantastic. Takes a long time for these things to cool down, though. Statue. This is a little bit of a... Um, I forgot when they added these to the game. This is just a lore area. You'll notice that the time in the bottom right is paused. A statue of the king of the island. How could he see anything with that helmet on? And you get a little bit of lore in the game by interacting with these uh, statues and whatnot and learning a little bit about what's going on. This is just a horrible, horrible trap area. Please don't. <laughs> Let's see what the damage is of these knives. It's, it's range damage. It's also not really that much damage. The knives are admittedly very good at taking out the birds, though. But I will admit the damage doesn't really seem that amazing, does it? Excuse me. Thank you. Also, have a ice grenade that didn't actually do anything. Hey, if you're gonna be caught in a bear trap, I'm just gonna throw uh, daggers at you forever. <laughs> forever and ever. There is a reason to have, like, these daggers, by the way. Like, we could have synergies where the, the weapon that we're dealing, and we're just gonna go for full brutality. Let's stack that damage. The damage will always scale plus 15%. The health will start to scale less and less and less as you take um, upgrades. So we're just gonna go full brutality for the raw damage and try to stack it as much as we can. Oh, careful of the traps. Um, 
What was I gonna say? I forgot what I was gonna say. I was gonna say something. Oh, I was gonna say like synergies. We could have a sword that like does more damage on a bleeding target, and then we'd have a reason to have a bleeding. Or maybe we have a reason a reason to have poison or burning or freezing, and then we can synergize our items accordingly. Right now it's early, so we don't have any of that. So the bow just has more ammo, but I'm w I wanna go red, so let's not worry about the bow. Falling into traps is fun. Also does a lot of damage, especially in the later uh, later levels. <laughs> Cowboy Opossum says, fun little fact, enemy sprites are 3D models. They just have pixel art overlaid on top of them. Makes sense, honestly. Because like considering the uh, like fidelity of the, the animations themselves, it kind of makes sense that it's a 3D, 3D model. But I think a lot of games do that, where they just have like um, a cell shader or tune shader applied to everything. A young woman, prisoner 6541. She's clutching something in her fist. It is a amulet. So we can either keep the ruby amulet or get rid of it and take the topaz amulet. I like the ruby amulet because we have an extra jump and stats. It gives us plus one brutality, the red fist. Now the topaz amulet, the star indicates that that's a, a, a powerful ability. The damage you take is inflicted upon enemies. But hey, if we just never get hit, then that won't be an issue, will it? <laughs> so this is um, this is an interesting little area. Before we do this, there is something that I want to do. Before we worry about that, I wanna I wanna show off one more thing. Right here. Oh, no, that's not what I thought it was. But hey, it's free gold. There's a rune on the ground that um, just gave us some gold. I actually thought it was something else, so my bad. <laughs> but keep an eye out for those runes because that's either money or also other things. It could be. Tickle. I'll, I'll tickle you all day. So there's a door here. There's also a wonderful looking key over there. We will enter the door. And that's funny. We'll head down here. There's an elite enemy. I didn't expect this to open up, by the way. I think that's a bug, actually. <laughs> um, we'll fight the elite enemy. This is what we're actually here for. And he died extremely quickly because I just rolled behind him and shot him because he was stuck in the freaking bear trap. Unknown artifact, pick up. Vine rune, permanent permanently causes climbing vines to grow. So normally what's supposed to happen is you're supposed to pick that up and then you come here and then you tickle this thing and then the vine pops up. For some reason it popped up when I just jumped over it. But now we have a permanent ability that'll last with us for the entire game ever. It's not, not run, game. The game now has unlocked this ability where we can grow vines, which allows us to access new areas that we couldn't before. And so, as we progress in Dead Cells, we will get more of those unlocked. Now, this yellow rune here, this is a rune that, that we can only interact with later once we get an upgrade. We don't have the ability. But the blue runes, those are, the blue runes are the ones that give you um, special stuff. Stats or um, just like a, an item or money or something. Enemies do fall and they do take a lot of damage. Pastry. Also, if you don't like pastries, you can change your diet. Omnivorous, carnivore, Castlevania-esque, vegetarian, fruitarian, monster, baguette, half-life, and cheese. So if you just like cheese, you can just become cheese. Man, Dead Cells is such a good game. Why are these guys armored? The heck? Oh, it's a, it's a legendary shield. All right, uh, I forgot about these. Legendary, sh legendary item pedestals can spawn kind of anywhere. So this is a greed shield. A successful parry knocks out the victim's teeth and transforms arrows into gold. Attacking just after a parry inflicts plus 300% damage and it's colorless, which means that your highest level of upgrades applies. So brutality, tactics, or um, survival. So honestly, let's take it. It's a legendary gold, greedy shield. Seems kind of cool. And we can parry enemies. And by parrying enemies, we can get money. 
We can also just like reflect projectiles and attacks, so I can just parry those those bombs back very easily. <laughs> uh. Greed shield, so good to be honest. Greed shield is not the best shield. There's a lot of better shields, um, but it's an okay shield. Honestly, uh, the only reason why this shield is pretty good is just because, uh, and we'll just go for whichever one gives us the most health, which is survival, because th those are not our primary stats. Those are just health stats for us because we're going red. Um, the only reason why this shield is good is because it has the ability to on parry inflict more damage. Otherwise, it's not amazing, I think. Great for early game to make cash available. The thing is, so cash, like the gold that we're finding, that only benefits you for this run. The cells actually benefit you for future runs because that's how you unlock items and whatnot. So getting more money on a run, it's not really all that important. I should actually like parry one of these guys. So here's your parry. <laughs> B to dodge. Oh, right. Sorry, game. Yeah, I'm still in the tutorial. So um, if you hold block, you take less damage. If you tap it at the right time, you can parry and completely negate the damage. The difference is, um, you know, the parry is harder, but the block is safer, but you still take some damage from the enemy's attack. Not full damage, but some damage from the enemy's attack. So really, it is very much like, what do you want in the moment? Do you want to take less damage because you think you're going to get hit, or do you want to try to go for the parry and take no damage? Dun, 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 dun. Fredaculus says, I didn't want to learn to parry until 5 BC. I parry all the damn time because I actually like parrying. And uh, parrying is not that hard in, uh, in Dead Cells. Not super hard anyways. Also, hey, secret zone discovered plus 1,000 gold. Thank you. We haven't taken much damage. We could heal. We always have the ability to heal now that we've unlocked it. We can heal once per uh, once per f level, once per area, and we get that heal back every time we transition to another level. So eight minutes. This door was sealed five minutes ago. Is how is uh, if you were trying to rush to get to this door, we killed 60 enemies without getting hit. So I can just go through this door and get some rewards, including a cudgel. This is a good shield. Stuns blocked enemies. Stuns last longer if a parry is a successful. That's a very good shield. It's probably one of my favorite shields, if I remember correctly. I mean, it's been a while, but stunning enemies so you can just wail on them. It's pretty nice. And Wolf Trap. Drops a grenade and the victim's remains explode. Well, we could upgrade the Wolf Trap, but the trap is not really... It's not really something that needs to be upgraded. I'm using it for its effect, not for its damage. So maybe we could just go for a shield. Um, tonic. Grants you 45% of your missing health as bonus health. Reduces damage taken by 20% for 9 seconds. Tonic. I have no idea. But I actually don't even need those items, I think. So I'm just gonna skip them, but... It's interesting. What's also interesting is that there's no um, scrolls in there, which is uh, honestly a benefit, I think. But that's a little uh, behind... or inside baseball there. So let's upgrade our health flask. Now we have two heals that we can use. And uh, we can unlock some other stuff, like random starting equipment. Locked. Unlock 10 more items to unlock this. Okay, so we need to, to probably just, like, unlock swords or stuff. So let's get the blood sword. Gold reserves. So now if we die, we actually get to keep some of our money. And uh, recycling allows us to turn items we don't want into gold. Probably just unlock the assassin's dagger or something. So the blood sword. Colorless? Really? That's interesting. I don't know why it's a colorless blood sword. Um, it is a sword that bleeds enemies. 8.6 DPS for 12 seconds of bleed. That's actually kind of a lot of bleed. Um, it's a colorless sword. 
So we could use it if we were uh, purple or green, but we're running red. Uh, victims burn when they die, but I kind of like the balance blade that we have, so... It's a balance blade 4+, plus, which is strange. It just got a random colorless modifier. Oh, that can happen? That's an interesting uh, little change. But I kind of like our sword that we have right now, so let's let's stick with it. We'll take a mutation. Critical hits reduce skill cooldowns. We do get a lot of crits, in theory. Uh, we could go successful parries reduce skill cooldowns. Uh, ranged kills reduce cooldowns plus damage after killing an enemy. Melee kills reduce skill cooldowns plus damage dealt if you get hit. I don't know, I really don't know what to take. Critical hits reduce skill cooldowns. We do want to crit a whole bunch, so maybe this is like acceptable. It's the like colorless upgrade. Hold on. Green things are random mods. I don't know what that means. Green things. But yeah, typically the uh, blood sword is red build, but this is just randomly colorless, just for the hell of it. Oh yeah, th th I understand what you mean, Viridi. The green text, those are just random effects of the weapon. So you can see that the shield has colorless and attacking after a parry inflicts 300% damage. And the balance blade on the left has plus damage to a burning target. So there is a burning synergy there and launches a grenade. Hey, Milchug! Thank you for the resub and also welcome. How's it going? Welcome to Dead Cells. Welcome back to Dead Cells, maybe. All right, let's go up to... The Ramparts. And check out what's up here. To keep the things exciting, the guards sometimes threw condemned prisoners from the Ramparts. And I can't read it fast enough. Reach the Ramparts for the first time. Achievement, a room with a view. It's a very pretty looking background. And you don't die when you fall off the ledge. I thought there was something down there though. There are secret areas in uh, in all these levels, so even in the ramparts, there are secret areas that you can explore. What is this? Oh, it's just... It's an elite fight? All right. I didn't expect there to just be a random elite zombie, but... I'll, I'll kick your ass. <laughs> Unknown artifact. Pick up. Okay. Customization rune. Oh, unlocks custom mode. So now we, I guess that they just put it here for some reason. So now if we wanted to, we could, um, we could just unlock, or we could play a run with whatever rules we want. We can change the rules of the runs. That's interesting. That's a weird place for it in the middle of the ramparts, but I guess that's okay. Yeah. Parry this guy's arrows. Knock your teeth out, give me the money. I gotta say, I'm actually very happy with this um, balanced blade. The fact that it crits after you just hit a whole bunch is, it seems to be very good because like we're, we're running around hitting things. That's what you want to do in the game anyways. You know, the more you're hitting, the more, you're, the more damage you're dealing. I'm not really using my greed shield to smack the, the teeth out of these enemies that much, but... Like, we don't really need the gold anyways, I feel. Yo, get back here. But I'm loving the damage that we're doing with this. And the fact that, the fact that every hit is a crit is also very nice because it reduces our skill cooldowns. Now all I have to do is actually use our skills. I'll take the money. The um, the other good thing about doors, by the way, what the heck are you? That's a new one. I haven't seen you before, ever. You're a new enemy. <laughs> yeah, new enemy. Let's fight him. Oh, he's an elite too, by the way. I'm gonna keep the. Uh, I'm gonna keep the uh, amulet we have. This one is slightly better, but I like the fact that the amulet that we have increases our our red equipment. Remember, you think you like big weapons, but you don't. They're too slow. That is a very truthful thing about dead cells. I always I always think that I like having uh, big, powerful weapons, but in general... 
I think the uh, faster weapons are a little bit better. So I, I think I know what this guy is. This is a uh, an enemy that was introduced in the game to help prepare you for like the, a future boss or something. This is an enemy that um, that they added in because they they don't have enemies other than this guy that kind of help you against um, help you to prepare for boss attacks. I remember reading about these guys. So this guy is doing attacks that the boss is going to do. I think. So he, he just smacks the ground and creates a shock wave. We can't actually uh, deflect the shock wave. We might be able to block it a little bit. No, nope, can't block it at all, even with the shield. And he also has, you jerk. He also has like that weird red aura attack. This is interesting. That's a new enemy. I've never seen him before. Kind of annoying because enemies that you can't uh, block are definitely annoying when you're when you've got a shield but you know it's it's good that he's he's in the game because previously there was nothing that kind of showed you that you know you can't block the the shockwave attacks or that you couldn't um, uh, stay near an enemy when they've got the red ring of aura of death starting to approach so I understand why they had to add that guy in to, to tutorialize the boss effects and the boss tactics and the boss attacks and all that nonsense. But you know what? Black Bridge. Wow, this is already the end of the floor if we wanted it to. We're going to keep exploring, though. Because there's more for us to do. There's always more to do. Yeah, that's um, that's cool. That's a neat little enemy. A lot of uh, a lot of the enemies in Dead Cells is like, oh, do you remember how this guy attacks? Do you remember how to can counter his attacks? There's a lot of pattern memorization, as is for like all games that are like this, and you know, in, in particular, Dead Cell, uh, not Dead Cells, uh, Dark Souls. Ooh, free turkey in a wall, 50% heal. In particular for something like Dark Souls, where you just have to, you have to do a lot of practice, especially against bosses. I'm gonna take Brutality for the plus 15% damage and a little bit of health. Well, I missed the second one. There we go. But hopefully, you know, as we play, we'll, uh, we'll all learn that that guy's pattern and also remember all the patterns for all these other enemies you've got these wizards who are firing uh, bolts you've got the birds that just love trying to trying to hit you and swarm you an infantry grenade victims burn when they die does a lot of damage quick and powerful or quick but not that powerful um, does a lot of damage but honestly, I kind of like having the uh, the two items that we have. If I ever want to lock down an enemy, I can just lock him down. Just toss a grenade at him or use the, uh, the, the, the traps. I like what we got. Red Wolf says, Abe has moved on to a game I know nothing about, Dead Cells. That's why we're um. That's why we're playing from the beginning, on a new save file but old knowledge. New save file, old knowledge. Sometimes these guys can be very annoying. <laughs> also, there's another one of these ground runes. Had a pie. I will eat this pie. I will eat this pie. But honestly, I just just wanted to come back to dead size. I want to I want to run around and hit enemies with my greed shield and knock their teeth out. You know, it's been far too long. And I think doing it on a new save file is just it's interesting enough because you know, we get to we get to learn about the balance of the game as we go and about all the different things that we can unlock now. Come here. Knock your teeth out. Whoa! I was surprised and startled. I missed my uh, parry. Rare blueprint, double crossbow matic. I don't, 
think it's that rare, but at least we do have a double crossbow-matic now. And as long as we make it to the next area, we can drop off this blueprint and unlock it. Well, we can, well, we can save the blueprint. We don't have to unlock the item on this run, but we can save the blueprint and make sure that the item can be unlocked on a future run. All you gotta do is give the blueprint to the collector and he'll hold on, hold on to it until he can afford it. Hello. It's another shop. Enemies hit will thaw out more slowly. Minus 2% damage received. Ice grenade. We could take two ice grenades, but I think we're okay with, with what we are. I kind of like the wolf trap. Victims burn when they die, because our sword does do more damage on a burn, but honestly, let's not even worry about it. Let's not spend the money on it. Da, 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 da. By the way, hello, Mud. I'm not ignoring you. I just uh, didn't answer in the moment. But I am good. Ow. The guys with the shields can be kind of annoying because they're very good at, um... Hello. They're very good at, um, blocking all of your damage in your shots. Like, they will, they will block your... Your arrows, they'll block your swords, they'll block your abilities, and we, I threw the grenade right into his face and he didn't even care the, that I uh, threw an ice grenade at him. I'm kind of, I'm kind of speeding a little bit right now, but that's kind of the flow of Dead Cells. When you get in a good flow and you're just kind of running around murdering things, it feels good, man. It feels good. And this is the end, uh, end of the level and the end of the world. Huh. I remember that secret. <laughs> Invisible platform that gives you a blueprint. Although I don't think there's anything else here. Yeah, okay, there's nothing else here. There is that invisible platform, which is, I think, kind of funny. Because there's absolutely no indication that there's an invisible platform there, and yet there it is. All right, so now I think we are done. I think we've done everything. I don't know what that is. There's like a little hallway here. Let's go check out that weirdo hallway. There is also um, this little secret room right here. There's a, a key in there. And if we had a gardener's key, we could get to that key. That's part of a, a bit of an of a, a secret that spans multiple levels, and we'll have to deal with that at some point in the future, but for now, I just want to explore. Ah, that's what this is. The uh, color must mean that that is a, um, a lore zone. Order of the King. An order of the King, probably for his officers. Anyone presenting behavioral disorders or noticeable physical deteriorations must be imprisoned immediately. An Iraq. I'll get more use out of this than the guards will. It's an item. Hey, Joe, welcome. Thank you for the sub. An invisible platform you couldn't see. <gasps> My God. I kind of kind of like the sinew slicer, though. Victims burn when they die. Maybe get rid of the wolf trap for this. So now we have like a little blade that comes out and it just fires saw blades. It scales with our red stats, which is pretty nice. That way we, we still have the freeze grenade, but we don't have both the freeze and the traps. But I think that's okay. Yeah, I don't think we can go anywhere else. So let's get the heck out of here. There's also uh, these doors. Which we can't open. These are, um... W once you beat Dead Cells, once you win the game, you can unlock hard mode, and those doors start opening up when you unlock the hard modes. Let's go to the Black Bridge. Strange Med says, my giant container of jelly belly beans arrived, and I'm really happy. Well, that's nice. Um, hey, this door is not open. That's because I took damage. Condition, kill 60 enemies without getting hit. Well, failed that one. Well, well, look who's here. Yes. So Nerves of Steel and the Double Crossbow Matic have been unlocked. Let's um start putting more points, though, into, like, gold reserves. Reserves money if you die, and then we'll unlock, like, random starting equipment. So instead of starting with Rusty Sword, we start with a Blood Sword or an Assassin's Dagger or something. Mutations. What do we want? 
parries reducing skill cooldowns. The attack following a parry inflicts plus 320 damage. Recover health when you kill an enemy up to 50%. Plus damage if there's no enemies near you, so like ranged builds. Plus damage if you're close to a deployed skill. I think we probably just want plus damage after killing an enemy. That way we can go real fast, I hope. Refill the flask, go to the black bridge, and this will be our first boss. Finally, a moment of rest. Yeah, right, dot, dot, dot. Concierge, AKA the incomplete one, if I remember correctly. So he's just lumbering towards us and doing an attack. Can I bury him? I can. I also knocked out his tooth. And there's the red aura. We only saw that for a minute on the, um, on the ramparts that one enemy did the, uh, the aura attack. But this is the boss that that guy is like preparing you for. Because we're gonna we're gonna see shock waves. We're gonna see auras. Kind of broke the sound there a little bit. But we're getting a lot of crits out of this. This is a nice little sword. Yeah, I remember how to fight this guy. This guy is not that hard. The next boss is gonna be a little harder though. No, you can't block that. I forgot. He also starts doing like lunges. I think you can block the lunge. Yeah, <laughs> the aura hit us, but we can block the lunge at least. The fat and the furious, he blew up. It's also a lot of money. We also get the flint. We get a new sinew slicer. A victim, bleed a victim of bleeding spreads it to other enemies. It's also just a higher level. Instead of level three, it's level four. We'll take it. We also get an unknown artifact. Daily challenge unlocked. Well, you know, whatever. Electric whip ignores shields and inflicts 50% of base damage on nearby enemies. Interesting, I guess they've changed whips since the last time I played, but also it's purple. I'm going to rock red equipment for damage. Let's not worry about it. Um, I could just take two sinew slicers, but that's probably too, too many. Let's just ignore those for the time being. We'll take one plus one frost grenade. That seems okay. 15 minutes, flawless the boss. <laughs> Hard to do. Hey, uh, short stuff. You made it this far alive, eh? Well, you know what I mean. I'm the blacksmith. I work with the collector next door. So if you've got the cells, I can improve your gear. Legendary Forge. Investing cells permanently increases the drop rate of high quality items. As we upgrade this, it will increase the chance that we get plus quality items, and then we can upgrade it to plus plus, and then we can upgrade it to S, I think. Maybe they've changed it. But we don't have a lot of money, a lot of cells to unlock this right now, so we're just gonna kind of ignore him for the time being. Instead, I'm just going to uh, keep spending points into like random starter equipment, which needs to happen. This guy, we could reset mutations for a thousand gold, but we only get three mutations. So the mutations we have are, we're stuck with, at least for now. And we can't get up there. There's no um, vine rune. It's just, you need like another ability to get there. We can go to the stilt village. What the heck is up here? Fractured Shrines. That's actually a new place. I've never been there before. I think for the first run though, we're just gonna do a little bit of a uh, of a standard Dead Cells run. Let's just go to the Stilt Village and have a good time there. Also, sounds good to me, Mud. My fish is fresh, Re reach the Stilt Village. I don't remember there being Oh my god, we one-shot him with the bomb. Are you kidding me? That's amazing. Heart of Ice, blueprint acquired, no idea. Um, what the heck are you? 
That's a new enemy. I don't even want to know what you do. Well, we should probably figure it out early. You, you don't attack me on that level? I'm scared? Oh, I know what you do. I just parried him accidentally. I know what he is. So this is an enemy who's um, tutorializing the next boss with that attack, I think. But let, let's let him hit us. We'll see what it is. Yeah, it's basically, hey, here's a yellow line and that's where I'm gonna attack. I'm really quick, I'm a freaking ninja. But you can parry it if you get the timing down correctly. That's so smart of them to have like, oh, grenade guys. That's so smart of him to have these enemies that can actually um, uh, train you on like the next bosses that you're gonna be fighting. These guys are so smart. So he's just he's just attacking that trap I put down. <laughs> and tossing some bombs. And then he's dead. Dude, I didn't realize that the bomb would do that much damage to him. Excuse me? I guess I guess that guy just shoots eggs, which summons enemies. That's a new one. Well, the enemy isn't new, the attack is new though. I don't remember him doing that. Okay, we gotta start picking up the pace though, because this sword is supposed to do more damage when we go fast. So I'm gonna go into this room here, which should give us a key, because that's what it had on, oh, uh, he does. That's what it had on the, uh, the door. It's the village key. We're gonna need this. Is there anything else up here? No, nothing we can reach anyways. Really wish you wouldn't just like spit a whole bunch of horrible garbage enemies into my face all the time. That's kind of annoying. I should really be using my um, I made it in. Oh! Well, that didn't work. Should really be using my uh, Sydney Slicer a little bit more. Whoops, the heck is over here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Climb up. Firebrands, burns enemies. We could dump the shield and take some firebrands, but let's keep the shield. <clears throat> Teleporting maggots ruined my kill streak, says Verdacula. Yeah, because the kill streak, you have to not get hit to keep it. So teleporting enemies is definitely annoying. Research notebook. The treatment administered to the latest volunteers seems to be producing results. They are still coughing, but they are vomiting much, much less. Or less blood in any case. Am I on the right track? The stain here. Is that more of a urine or a bile color? Probably a mixture of the two. This is my character speaking to themselves. Flask. Concentrated essence of burblurium. Eight times a day, more if the subject vomits, resuscitate if necessary. Note any signs of improvement in the register. We are a silent, no one else can hear us, we're a silent protagonist, but we can hear ourselves talk. Just in case anyone was curious about that. So teleporting maggots definitely suck. It, it's the, uh, the enemy that kind of spits them out. He's the one who's creating them. 20,000 for a flask recharge. A bit expensive, but thank you, Kitchen. Right into welcome. Oh yeah, new new game. We are the voice in our heads. Brutality. We're gonna keep going brutality. HP would be nice. We, we're, we're still getting some HP for brutality, but um, I just want the damage, honestly. Go ahead, shoot me. Apparently this is the easiest way of killing you ever. Just knocking your own uh, bomb back. Who would have guessed it? That door can live. So we have a village key, which you need to open the village key door. I like those enemies. Well, we can parry the bombs? I forgot that. Plus 10% HP still by going Brutality, so we'll still go Brutality. Dude, there's uh, way too many of these guys. I guess that's what you want like your um, Sinew Slicer for, because it can help deal with the... Uh, 
it can help deal with the garbage while you kind of pick up the scraps. Or it's picking up the scraps while you deal with everything else. Excuse me, why are you shielding? I'm like gonna die? Hold on, I'm, I'm having a, a confusing moment here. I'm gonna heal, also, because I almost died. Oh, those things heal, keep you uh, invulnerable, don't they? So left trigger. Now I can hit you. Go ahead. Well, that didn't work. It definitely feels like they've toned down the elites, but they're still heavily annoying at times. Okay, Sapphire Amulet. Gives us brutality and tactics, and damage from projectiles reduced 75%, and poisons enemies that wound you. So we're gonna take the new upgraded amulet. More little maggot enemies. I'm liking the sword though. Sword's the best thing about this run right now. Hello, money. Always take the money. So we could take a blood sword, we could take a different ice grenade. Victim's remains explode or slows down. Slow after thaw last. Tw slow down after thaw 2x longer, whatever that means. I guess I'm gonna keep slow down after thaw 2x longer. That sounds pretty good. They really buffed shields from when they first came out. Yeah, originally, um, shields were, were kind of garbage, but uh, one benefit to having a shield, even just to hold it, even if, you're, even if you're not using it, is that if you get hit, you get a momentary invincibility after every time you get hit, which is very nice. Infantry grenade, don't really care. I, I kind of like the loadout that we have. Some freeze on annoying enemies is uh, it's probably helpful. You know, it's probably gonna save me a bunch of HP if I can freeze enemies as they uh, are trying to murder me. I'm even thinking for like these guys, like, well, you fell, but in theory. There's 30 enemies killed without getting hit. There's a counter in the bottom right corner for that. Not even close to what we uh, really need, but oh well. Don't I need a key for this? Hold on. Yeah, there's a key door over there on the left. We gotta go to the key door to get out of here. Could've teleported, but I guess I'm gonna go the long way. <laughs> okay, so this is key door. We should get another key here. I love that little float you do as you are, um, as you are uh, swinging your sword in the air. So there's the other village key. Now we can exit through the big doors at the end. I'm skipping things that I know we can't interact with. Like there is another exit here, but we can't access this other exit um, for a little while. So, I'm just going to the exit that I know we can interact with. I think things may have been changed at some point, but... You know, at least for the time being, I'm just gonna do what I know. Clock tower. Let's go to the clock tower. Dong, da dong, dong, dong. Well, didn't get the... Uh, Kill 60 enemies between getting hit challenge. That's okay. Heart of Ice, it's a mutation. Attacking a frozen, stunned, or rooted enemy at close range reduces skill cooldowns by one second, works with both melee and ranged weapons. Really? <laughs> it seems very, like, specific and situational. <laughs> Here, have, um, hey, you there. I work for the blacksmith. I can patch up your gear for cheap. I'm not really supposed to be here. Let's just keep that between us, okay? Thumbs up. Right, come on then. We can um, upgrade our weapons to a higher quality by paying this man. I will upgrade my sword to a higher quality. It is now a 4++ plus plus sword. Also gave it um, better stats or different stats. 
plus damage on electrified targets, plus damage for hits in the back, launches a grenade. I could just reroll the stats for 950. Plus damage to a bleeding target. We have bleeding, it's the, uh, the sinew slicer, so that seems like a very good synergy. So let's upgrade the sinew slicer to a plus quality. Shots pierce the first tan- sorry. Shots pierce the first target and take lower damage when you're near it, but let's reroll it to make it better. There we go. Bleeding spreads it to other enemy. A victim of bleeding spreads it to other enemies and shots pierce the first target. So that seems like a pretty good set of rerolls. Um. Okay, yeah. Rubbish. Bits and pieces of weapons and armor. Hey, I recognize some of this. Yeah, it's all my stuff. Hard to see how you could reforge a grenade or, or a bow with a tool like that. <laughs> Very slipshod game design. This game does break the fourth wall all the damn time. Let's go to the clock tower. I'm kind of like... I'm not rushing through the game at all. This has actually been a, a bit of a longer run, but I am um, starting to remember why I liked Dead Cells so much when I was playing it before. This game is a lot of fun when you are, you know, in a streamlined section of combat and you're uh, just murdering everything. And you're, you're doing a good job of it too. <laughs> just I ideal. So these enemies are dying out of range of us because the, uh, the, 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 the sinew slicer is inflicting bleed and enemies that are bleeding when the sinew slicer kills them inflict a bleed to other nearby enemies. So we're, we kind of have like a bleed chain happening here. I should also probably make sure everyone knows what these enemies are doing. So this guy fires bullets. He also fires bullets that, or grenades that explode into mini grenades. So that's his, his deal. Whoa! This guy is just scary. He, he's even scary to me right now. <laughs> he like lunges at you and drops bombs and whatnot. He's he's actually kind of garbage. So let's just make sure that he dies as quickly as possible. It's, it's gonna be hard for me to parry him. I don't remember his uh, timing of his attack at all. But he's a, he's a fun guy. I wanna see if I can get to kill that actually seems pretty good. Enemies hit by this will thaw slowly, and upon thawing, suffer from bleed. I'll take it. Um, I want to try to get to 60 kills without getting hit, and then I'll try to like parry enemies and whatnot. But um, that gives us a benefit when we... Holy crap, what the heck are you? That's new. I haven't seen... I've never seen that before. <laughs> but, you know, we get a benefit when we... Um, well, there's my hit, so maybe we'll not worry about it. We get a benefit if we can kill enemies without taking damage, and then I got hit, so... Yo, give me the money. Thank you. So let's see if we can parry this guy. We did it. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't that bad. He drops... The thing is, he drops bombs when he rolls away from you. And he does, like, a three-hit combo. So he's actually kind of annoying. I, I'm understanding what's happening now. That guy, he's teleporting in, hitting, and then teleporting away. He's like uh, some hunter assassin or something. That's cool. And scary as hell. I wonder if we're gonna fight him later. Like maybe, maybe at the top of the tower, we're gonna have to defeat him as like a mini boss or something. I don't know, That's, that, that seems a little scary though. The fact that he can appear anywhere is scary. Or maybe, maybe it's actually, um, I'm spitballing here, I'm just like game designing. What if, because we're in the clock tower, every like 60 seconds exactly he appears? You know, what if it's very uh, orderly? You never know. Also, these enemies, I haven't really talked about them at all. They, um, they have a teleport and they can teleport behind you to attack you. They're heavily annoying. These small assassins wearing the, or holding the daggers. Um, I guess we're just gonna go for tactics, plus 18% as opposed to 17% health. We do have 7,000 health, which is a lot. There's an enemy in front of me. I can see him, he's invisible. 
I, is that his thing? Dude, there's another one. You see him? He's gone. <laughs> there's another one above me, though. I, I wanna, I wanna parry him. I'm trying to get the parry window. We got him, ladies and gentlemen. We got him. That's a, that's a new boy. I've never. Oh god, I've never seen that boy before. Also scary. Invisible enemies do give you a, a very minor shimmer when they're nearby. That's cool though, that's cool. Use. Now we're in the thick of it. Man, enemy bombs do a lot of damage when they go off. Go ahead. You made me ring the bell. We'll talk about the bells in a minute. <laughs> For now, let's just ignore them. I'm just gonna keep going for brutality. We have 13 brutality, five tactics, and five survival. So the five and five, those are just giving us stats, like health, I should say. Uh, brutality is giving us all of our damage. So we'll take 17% health. Now we have 9,000 health, good lord. And a lore room, grimoire, research notebook. The bodies immersed in the latest solution are changing less quickly. I must extract the essence of this solution and apply it to the other volunteers. There's a, a horrible, horrible disease inflicting, you know, uncalculable damage to the kingdom, and people are trying to create a solution for this. The king has ordered his soldiers to lock people away who are exhibiting symptoms of the malaise, Researchers are doing everything they can. Even, uh, you know, doing research on volunteers trying to find solutions to this illness. And, and I guess we're just going up and up and up and up and up. I got the parry in. I didn't even see that for a while there. He's a, that's a cool enemy, though. The, the enemy that um, is invisible. I thought, I thought that it would just teleport in, but it's not teleporting in, it's, it, it has a physical presence. Um, that's a mimic? It's not a mimic, it's just a trapped chest. But did you see the value of transferring bleed to other targets? We got the clockmaker's key. Like that, that sinew slicer just chewed them up. That was beautiful. There's a little bit over here we haven't explored yet another one of these teleporting stones. I want to try to not... Oh, I want to try to not get hit. There's still a chance that we could kill 60 enemies without taking damage, but, you know, it's getting to be a little uh, unlikely. Dude, the spreading bleed is fantastic. Key required. Bell tower key. We'll talk about that later. Oh! Hello. He's gone. He's a weird enemy too because he goes away if you don't kill him, which is pretty funny actually. <laughs> like what? He just, he just, he's like, nah, I'm out. You didn't kill me in time. Get out of here. Well, he hit me, but there goes our um, kill enemies without getting hit bonus. Balanced blade seven. More damage to a bleeding target. I think we're gonna take this balanced blade. Its damage is ever, ever, ever so slightly lower, but I can upgrade this to be better than the one that we currently have. So let's get the slightly lower quality, but higher level one, and then we'll upgrade it in the future, and then hopefully it'll just be better. And I think we're done. So before we leave, because I, I think everything's been uh, been completed. Before we go, the last thing that I want to do is look for the bells. So now I don't remember where all the bells were because I was just kind of running through the levels. So we're just gonna have to do a, a very minor amount of backtracking, except for this, which is just like the largest drop ever. And we're still going, and we're there. So where the heck were the bells? Yeah. 
Because I do remember this little, um, little challenge. So there's a bell. Pay attention to that sound. I guess they may have changed the, uh, the puzzle at some point, but this is a puzzle that we're trying to solve. Also, let's remember where it was. It was right there. <laughs> so, any other bells? Actually, don't see any bells in here. Da -da 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 -da. Hopefully the music is coming through, because the music in this game is fantastic, too. So that's a very lower pitch than the one from, from previous. It's a very uh, long puzzle, because <laughs> you gotta go back and forth a couple of times. I never opened that door, huh? That's a higher pitch than the other ones that we've we've seen. Hold up. And that's the lowest we've seen. So this is the lowest pitch one. Now he can't even remember where they were. No, there wasn't one here. Oh, damn it. <laughs> no, 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 it, it, was, it was in here, right? I think it was this one? Nope, that is real high-pitched. So, let's go back to this... Oh, crap, where was it? Oh, no. Now we, now we get the awkward uh, puzzle solving where it's like, I can't even remember where everything was. So that's a low pitch. And then I th think, I think there was one here. This must be the second to low pitch. That seems to be correct. Yeah, the background music is so nice in this place in particular because you can hear like the constant beat of the, the clock in the background and it sounds, you know, mechanical in nature. And then, high-pitched one was... here down? Was it? No. Oh my god, I'm so bad at this. <laughs> I'm so bad at this! <laughs> oh god, where the- oh lord. Okay, that's lowest pitch. Second lowest pitch must, must be over here. And then... No, wrong way. That other one must have been the third lowest pitch. So it must be... Was it here down? I think it was here down. Open the door, and then we go up. Then I think it's this one. There we go, there's the bell tower key. Puzzle solved <laughs> after a couple of attempts. Uh, and then where the heck was that locked door? It was right here. You can see the keys in our inventory in the bottom right there by the mini-map. So now we have that, which gives us a new blueprint. All, we did all of that for a shield. But hey, it's gotta be done at some point. Might as well do it now. All right, go up. The clock room. Let's head into the clock room. Did not kill 60 enemies without getting hit. <laughs> get the powerful grenade, we get punishment. Blocked attacks inflict damage on nearby enemies. Critical damage if the parry is successful. Very interesting. We have 43 cells. Let's just continue upgrading random starting equipment. Unlock four more items to get another health flask upgrade, so I'm just gonna keep dumping 
cells into whatever I can. Don't need anything else. Let's take health, go to the clock room. It'd be funny if we actually just won the run. <laughs> but, you know, we would unlock uh, the next blood, or the next uh, boss cell anyways. The timekeeper with her pairs of swords. I remember how to do this, I think. Just keep parrying. Let's finish this. Also, you have giant swords coming down from the ceiling now. Oh! That's the attack that was um, constantly being uh, telegraphed earlier. <laughs> we, did we just kill her? Well, she actually just left, but I guess she is the timekeeper. That's funny. I really did not think that we would just kill the timekeeper. It's been a while since I played this game, but I guess I remember enough of the fight. Blue Quint Blueprint acquired light speed. Uh, balanced blade, six. Well, I have a balanced blade seven, so I'm gonna keep the seven. Go to the next level. I like that it just says next level. <laughs> next level of the clock room, maybe? Did not defeat the boss flawlessly. Uh, I'm not gonna upgrade you because we have just an infinite number of things to unlock in the collector. We'll get the random starter shield. Blue uh, mutations are fine. Health is now refilled. And we're going to the High Peak Castle. The king allowed the alchemist to move into a ring of the, the a wing of the castle. This was around the time of something. I can't interact with that, but I guess that's the king. Dun, 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 dun. I remember these enemies being a pain. <laughs> Balance Blade Eight. Pretty cheap, too. Increase your movement speed for five seconds after killing an enemy. I mean, I guess we like that. I guess I'm gonna take the higher level equipment whenever possible, so we'll take the Balance Blade 8. Can't go this way. There's gonna be a lot of that, we can't do this yet sort of, sort of deal. What the heck are you? You just, you hop. You're a hopper, huh? Is that all you do? You just kind of walk away from me and then hop a little bit? All right. That's a new one. <laughs> it makes sense that he exists. Oh man, you're so easy to kill. It makes sense that he exists though, because they need some way of, of again, tutorializing like future enemies that you're gonna be fighting. But I'm just, I'm surprised because it's like, it's new. I haven't seen something new in a long time in this game. We're gonna go through this door. I love murdering enemies on their own attacks. Uh, I hate Mr. Spinner who didn't die from anything. Mr. Spinner there was having a hard time dying. I helped him. You attack through doors! I'm gonna try to get through this <laughs> without getting myself killed. I'm, remem I'm, I'm remembering so much going through this. Elite Slasher. He's now pissed. Dude, we did parry him though. And he's dead. Thank you, little turret friend. Key to the castle. Can you not parry these guys anymore? Oh, that was a lot of damage. I mean, I just kind of face tanked him a little bit, but I was curious if you could parry him. I thought you used to be able to. 
That's an annoying elite. I, I, I can tell what elite it is, too. It's the one that has um, a, a, like, aura ring of death around him. I'm just, I'm just letting the turret kill him at this point. You can, you can see that, like, aura ring. I think you've just got to jump over it when it happens, but it happens so quickly. Minus 10% damage received. We will upgrade our amulet to the one that's just strictly better. Hey. Hey. I do love parrying these guys to death. That is a lot of fun. So we're done with the blue zone. I forgot that the shockwave actually does have a, a large upwards AoE on it. We get initiative. Blueprint acquired. Okay. You can parry him still. Just feels a little harder. Let's keep our um, our attacks going too, because the crits are are very nice. Oh. Let's also get that money in the wall. Dun, 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 dun. And I guess we're gonna lose our our crits and whatnot because I had to go back to the teleporter to go off in this direction. But oh well. Let's just build it back up again. Another scroll. Give me more brutality. I want to do as much damage as possible with this uh, balanced blade. Oh! Oh! Okay, so they have another attack where they kind of push you with a shield. Very interesting. Now, if only you would do that attack sometimes instead of... Oh, you just, you keep pushing even though I parry you, huh? Interesting. Really? I do think that the shockwave, it doesn't look like it hits that far. Like, come on. You kidding me? Yo. I do wish that my uh, grenade hit you. Dark Trackers. That's the name of these guys. I'm just waiting for my uh, frost grenade because uh, it locks them in place because they're standing in a liquid. So now they can't really do anything. They're just kind of locked in here. You're not locked in here with me. So we get another castle key. Bit of a pattern here. We are just fighting a whole bunch of elites in these uh, rooms. But we gotta find him to get these castle keys. Well, we got hit, so. Say no to getting that 60 door without getting hit door. Hello. You had food and a scroll in you. What a what a great enemy. Thank you. Thank you for the scroll food. 14 or 15. I will go with plus 15% health. Might as well go for the one that gives you a higher number. And we've not gone through Green Door yet, so let's go through Green Door. Whoops. Whoops. Actually, make the jump, please. Thank you. Sometimes they fire a little slowly, and you think to yourself, you should be a little bit faster than you actually are. Also, I got hit by a trap there. And he almost pushed me into the spike wall. Luckily, he missed, though. <laughs> this is a, a very unique enemy here. He actually has a... That is not what you do. I hit the wrong button. He actually has a shield on his back that is spikes, and if you hit him, you, you hurt. <laughs> he hurts you. You hurt yourself, more like it. You gotta be a little bit careful about that one. No. You will not live long enough to do that. Ah! Let's go into this room. 
a whole bunch of strange flowers with an astonishing smell. Research notebook. The latest crossbreeding produced no results. The extracts administered to the volunteer produced a shapeless monstrosity, half man, half plant. The subject failed to survive. Interesting. I wonder if any of this is related to um, the DLC, because, I mean, it kind of kind of sounds a little bit like it could be bad seed DLC stuff, you know? Is there another room? I don't remember a white room. This could be new. Hold on, this could be new. <laughs> the heck is white room? The hand is above the king's suspicion, which is more than I can say for the giant. Though I secretly hope he's okay. We've not seen him in a while. I guess this is a lore room. There's a strange taste to the food since the old cook was offed. The hand doesn't seem to mind though, so I just hold my nose and dream of custard. The king is convinced of the existence of a plot against his life. While such a plot may have cause to exist, I've seen no evidence of it. Worse, the food hasn't been up to standard since he had the cook executed. King size. <laughs> King came to my quarters to personally remove the portrait of the giant I, and I together. I understand his frustration, but my men were rattled. Hmm. Maybe the king is going insane? He's insane! Seeing conspiracies where none actually exist. That was a great bit of no dodging. Frost Blast 6 Legendary. Freezes enemies in front of you. No damage if the target is frozen. Colorless. Enemies hit by this will thaw more slowly. The victim's remains explodes. Well, we could get rid of the the greed shield at this point for a frost blast. Just freezes the crap out of enemies. But I actually kind of do like the shield because we are going to be fighting. We're, we're pretty close to being done with this floor and the next floor is, is what I'm worried about, I think. Ice Grenade, 8. Our current Ice Grenade is 7. Or Sinew Slicer, 8. Our current Sinew Slicer is 4. <sighs> Sinew Slicer, 8. Would probably be a pretty good upgrade. It's probably going to be a pretty good upgrade. Why is, why is this door yellow? Have I, does that mean I've went through the door? Probably means I've went through the door. Um, let's see, where are we going? I guess the only place there is left to go is just up here. Go ahead, spin. Spin! Keep spinning! That's what you do best. so satisfying to get the parry and that's the thing sometimes it's it's not really worth it but it's just satisfying to get the parry and they don't do anything they just hit your seat your shield ineffectually unlock unlock and we could go to the throne room but we have three keys let's unlock the last door and see what's going on here frost blast Freezes enemies in front of you, no damage taken if the target is already frozen. Plus 100% damage inflicted on enemies, but plus 100% damage taken. Or Ice Grenade 6, enemies hit by this will thaw more slowly. Our Ice Grenade is already fine. We'll just take our scroll, continue upgrading Brutality. And then take a look at this boomerang that, that we cannot access. At least not yet. I do have three jumps though. Maybe I can get it with three jumps? Let's see. Almost certainly not. I can't jump that high. <laughs> Alright, that's for another run. Let's go to the throne room. And see what we got. Did not kill 60 enemies. Initiative. Your first melee attack on an enemy inflicts plus 800 damage. Okay, that's actually kind of nice. Benefits you attacking lots of enemies as opposed to, you know, like a boss or something like that. So we have recycling now. So if, the, if there's items on the ground, we can just turn them into cash. 
Uh, Reroll, I guess we will upgrade the balanced blade, and I guess we'll upgrade our sinew slicer again. And honestly, you might as well upgrade the ice grenade. Slow down, last twice as long. Burns the ground when destroyed, plus damage to a burning target shots pierce. Victims burn when they die, increases movement speed, shoots an arrow in front of you. I'm gonna reroll the blade. Plus damage on a bleeding target is very good for the uh, sinew slicer. And then I'm also gonna reroll the sinew slicer. And again. And again. And again. Burns. Burns the ground when destroyed, plus damage on a burning target. We didn't really get anything particularly helpful there, but that's okay. Was Dead Cells? Dead Cells is this game. <laughs> Does that answer your question, Brendan Toad? It's the hand of the king. Oh, I was so off on the timing for that. At least we are getting those guaranteed crits now. I don't remember his timing. Oh, I remember this fight. No, I got stuck. I remember this fight. You have to, um, you have to fight a whole bunch of uh, elite enemies. Oh, I fell in the spikes. He pushed me. Also, I remember that he does he does three attacks with his um, very large, weird weapon. So if you're gonna parry, you gotta parry all three of them. Can I parry those bombs, I wonder? I hope so. Disgusting worm elite enemy. <laughs> That's his name, Disgusting Worm. That's a beautiful name. Also, I remember the flags. I forget what the flags do, but I do remember the flags. Stop it. This guy loves his, uh, his shockwave attacks. And by killing the hand of the king, we get all of the cells, and... The stem cell, or the boss cell, modifies the difficulty level and unlocks new modifiers. That's probably where we're gonna have a hard time uh, winning the game until I'm, I, I re-familiarize myself with how this game operates, because the first, the first run through is not that bad. Symmetrical Lance. New weapon, inflicts critical hits for six seconds. If you quickly kill two enemies with this weapon, can break shields, plus 300% damage inflicted on enemies. What? Plus 300% damage? That's insane. Kill. What's, what's going on over here? Back room. This room seems to have been added after the construction of the castle. A five boss cell door. I've seen this type of shells before in the king's castle. Okay. I'm in the water. I guess... Kill the king. That's not how you do that? This is new, I think. Finish the game with the extra life in your possession. <laughs> I don't remember that that ending. I don't. And now I am just my head because this is who I was the entire game. Just a head. I am a head. I guess that's a wall. Oh, I can. 
I forgot about this. I can crawl onto walls. <laughs> I am ahead. I am ahead. I am ahead. I am ahead. Okay. Now what? Can I heal? Cannot heal. Can hit the... Oh, I can just crawl over the spikes, I guess. Leave. Slurp. Tickle the head. <laughs> and back to the prisoner's quarters we go. And conveniently, there's another body here. Where the hell has old bones gone? Uh, there was a, a big giant here earlier, wasn't there? Oh, I guess we have a uh, humunculus. Right stick to leave body. So now we have just a head that we can we can use at any point. And also, right behind old bones, there's a quick bow. There you go. So, oh, and there's a little secret up there too. And there's our money. There's our cells that we had at the end of the last run. And this is the room of... The heck? This is the room, uh, and all the, f all the like, people are here. Like, these are normally people who are supposed to, like, filter in slowly, I think. Uh, these are all of the, like, unlocks in the game. All of these. There's so many! <laughs> There's so many! I can't remember, I don't remember there being this many. This is why I wanted to play the game again, just to, like, try to see how fast I could, like, unlock some of these items and whatnot. There's so many of them. Uh, but we do have that boss cell, which we can't do anything with, I guess, because I went too far to the right. But you put it in here into the machine, and, um, it gives you the ability to up the game to difficulty level one. As opposed to difficulty level zero that we're on right now. And it makes the game harder, but you get more uh, cells. You can upgrade your forge a little bit more. And uh, I, I think you can also get different types of blueprints unlocked. So there's a lot of stuff in this game to unlock as we progress. And then, of course, there is the wherever it is. I can't find it, though. I'll look for it later. Um, there's a secret around here somewhere that I think we can access, but I forget exactly where it is. Is it just this one? Like, hold on. I don't think I can actually get up there, so maybe I don't know where it is. But hey, that's uh, that's my first run of Dead Cells with this new DLCs installed. We haven't even seen this is the daily challenge, and I guess that door is open now. All oh, right, that's um, Rise of the Giant DLC stuff, isn't it? That's what that is. Um, but we have uh, the ability to throw a head. And we've completed our first run of Dead Cells. I didn't think I would complete the first one without having more heals coming back, but I guess I remember enough of this game from my uh, my time playing it last that we were able to kind of get through it pretty quickly here. So there we go, Dead Cells. I, I might play some more of this over time, we'll see. But for now, it's Dead Cells, baby. <laughs>